I'm talking to James McKinnon about Star Trek Discovery. Yes, I'm James McKinnon. I'm department head prosthetics for the hit TV show Star Trek Discovery. I subscribe to a CBS yeah. All Access. Me, me as well. <laughs> we don't even get it for free. What do you mean you don't get no, it for free? No, we gotta pay. I gotta pay five ninety five a month. What? Yeah, CBS. right. Yes, I know, right? Never even got it offered. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how CBS keeps its money. That's true. Yeah, it's smart. They're smart. So, how did you start in prosthetics? I have been doing it thirty years. Um, I know, thirty years. Um, you look way too young for that. It. Thirty, nineteen eighty-eight. I started. Um, uh, how did I do it? I was looked in the back of Fangoria magazine when I was living in a trailer park in Colorado, and well, two days before that, I snuck into Friday the Thirteenth in nineteen eighty. Oh, no, no, I snuck in. Yeah, uh, I was ten. Oh. Yes. Uh, I snuck into that. I was supposed to see um, the Jungle Book, the original, the original okay. Jungle Book. So I snuck into Friday the 13th, and I saw Jason slide down on the axe, and I'm like, you can do that for a living? That's what I want to do. Wow. And weirdly enough, my career is, I do beauty as well, so I do prosthetic. I make, I, I make you look pretty, and I cut your head off. <laughs> Funny. What yes. do you mean by making yourself look pretty? Do you mean making prosthetics for people? No, no, I, no. I do beauty makeup, so I make you look pretty. Do your beauty makeup and then turn you into a monster. So do really? a little bit of both. Yeah. That is so funny. Yeah. So how did? You, what's your background to learn how to do that? M old, I seem a old, oh, uh, just a lot of reference to old uh, movies, old, uh, you know, anything, anything old. And my peers, the makeup artists before me, just watching them, how they do it, uh, I, we, we all learn from each other. Um, it's, a, it's a very small, small is not the right word, there's 2,700 makeup artists in L.A., um, but it's just a small community that we just learn from each other. Even That's today, really cool. 30 years into it, I'm, I stare down at the other side of the trailer, watch what people do, I'm like, oh shit, he did it that way, I'm going to try that, and then I say that I made it up. No. <laughs> You're no, funny. no, but we, we do, it is it is a it's a it's an art it's an it's an art. Make, mm -hmm. What's the second thing I do for a living? Makeup artist. So, it's it's an art. And so, not a labor. Not a labor. It's no. Labor of love. Yeah. Labor it, of geeky love. It, yes, I mean, and this is my fifth fifth Star Trek TV show in my career. I did Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Star Trek: First Contact, the first JJ movie, and Discovery. So I've been around six. I just lied to you in front of everybody. Six, I did uh, Star Trek, Starfleet Academy. It was a CD-ROM. No way. Yeah, remember CD-ROMs? I don't CD remember that. I don't remember that. Nine, was that with Wesley? Nine, uh, no, um, um, Shatner was in it. Um, 90, C, it was a CD-ROM. What do you mean by CD-ROM? You mean like a video game? Yes, before video games. Before We're the same age. CD, it was it was CD-ROMs, and then that was the start to video games. It was like an interactive. Was it Sega? Mm, no. No, that was before no. Sega. Was it that it was thing that you did with Pac-Man? Remember that game um, that you played ping pong with? No, this was more like they would show a clip, and you would choose which direction to go into next. Like you can go. I vaguely really remember my parents wouldn't buy me that. They're cheap chips. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're adorable. They're I love you, love parents. Yeah. Um, I'm getting distracted. I'm a makeup artist. You're a makeup artist. <laughs> so have, when they I told you you were going to be working, I have four Emmys. I'm not going to throw any more stuff down about myself. I have six nominations. <laughs> but I was. I love I, the humble I, brag. I was no, but at, at 30 years, you, I still love it. I still love what I do. So uh, back to me. I. Um, <laughs> I was nominated for uh, an Emmy for Apocalypse Rising, which was a Voyager episode, uh, 97. There was like 27 Klingons, and now I get to do Klingons on Star Trek Discovery. It's kind of fucking, kind of darn cool. Kind of, you can cuss, can't you? No. You can curse. Okay, can you cur it. It's so darn cool. <laughs> so darn, darn cool. Yeah. I was going to use the F word, but, but it's, that's a good word, too. So it's so neat. So when you were brought on, you knew you were going to be working on Star Trek. Or was I it would, a mystery? Um, I was supposed to, I was going to do, uh, I do the Fast and Furious movies. Um, so I was supposed to do Fast and Furious 8, and then Star Trek was supposed to start 
earlier than it did. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'd rather do Star Trek than Fast and Furious. But it ended up getting pushed for a few more months. So I was ended up able to do Fast and Furious. And right when I got home, literally, I got home and I went, started Discovery. That's really cool. Yeah. So the, so one of the things that I saw when I was watching the show, yes. the Klingons look so different than any of the Klingons I remember from any, because I've watched all the Star Trek yeah. shows. And, but time has changed and, and uh, um, technology has changed and people change. That's all I'm going to say about that. My boss, Glenn <laughs> Hetrick, which owns uh, Alchemy <laughs> FX, uh, is a better person to chat with about the looks and the creation side of it. I put it on. Mm -hmm. You give me Mary's makeup, and I slap that shit on her like nobody's... It takes two and a half hours, but I slap it on in two and a half hours. One of her makeups took five. And so with that kind of makeup, that's when you have something made out of latex, and then you put glue on. Or it is, is it makeup where you put it on? Silicone. Oh, silicone. So back in the day, in the, in the 90s, when I was doing uh, D Deep Space Nine and Voyager, it was foam latex. And mm -hmm. now the new technology is silicone. So it's... It's uh, translucent, so it, we're, it's intrinsically colored, and we put little washes of Gatorade-like thin washes of color on top of it because the camera, like HD cameras and the 4K cameras, mm -hmm. our secrets are given away. It's so... it's for These cameras are made for NASCAR and Animal Planet. Not women <laughs> and not prosthetics. No, it's just... I have to work twice as hard to be able to hide Mary's five-piece prosthetic so mm -hmm. you don't see this edge, this edge, this oh, edge. Really goes in, yeah, because yeah, it's five pieces put on top of each other. Oh. And that camera, it's not just a mask. Prosthetic. We do have masks for far away Klingons, but no, uh, Mary's makeup is five pieces. Mm -hmm. Cowl, face, chin, lip, upper lip. I find it fascinating because I had a regular TV. It mm -hmm. died about an HD TV. Yes. It died. And I got a Samsung 4K. And it, it was noticeably different. I could really, like, oh, looking yeah. at it was almost like I was in the screen. It was so detailed. It's, I, I hadn't know, known how much detail you guys were putting in stuff oh, yeah, until like the, I got that. Like the first episode, um, it was very dark. So we had to change our coloring mm -hmm. to compensate for the for the dark sarcophagus. Uh, the second episode, we lit it a little bit better. We now had to change change the colors because it was too much for that, which we backed off a little bit for the lighting. So every day is a different day. And I, was, I always say I, throughout a whole entire season, I probably, I changed the makeup 15, 20 times. Mm -hmm. You'll never see it, but I just change it for myself uh, to make things go faster, uh, tweak little little layers of color that appease me mm -hmm. to keep myself challenged as a makeup artist because doing Doug's makeup 90 I did Doug's makeup 90 times mm -hmm. last season that's a lot that is a lot but his makeup looks good it looked good in uh, my um, HDTV and it looked even better in the 4k it looked like he was not human that's that's what we want. And I look at him that way, too. I remove myself as Doug being under there, and I see it as the character, not mm -hmm. Doug, under there. And Mary, I do Mary, too. I do James Frayne as Sarek. I do too many makeups. but um, And they, sometimes they're all sitting in my chair at the same time. Oh, not on so top funny. of each other, but literally a lineup. Like, I do something on Mary, and then I jump to him, and I have my assistant work on one mm -hmm. while I start. Because they always want them on set at the exact same times. And mm -hmm. I'm a magician. I'm a, they think I'm a... Uh, a magician. I'm just a makeup artist. But sometimes I, <laughs> I sometimes I charge them an extra twenty five dollars, and I bring my magic wand and be like, "You're done." You my little so Harry funny. Potter wand. I don't know the, the terminology for the Harry Potter. What's stuff. your favorite uh, character that you are working on with Star Trek Discovery? As far as like their makeup and and the they are design. all they are. Uh, I'm not that kind of like. Do you go to the same vacation place two times? I don't. So. They're all cool to me. They're all they're all e equally challenging. Really? In a great way. No, not one stands out from another. Really? Yeah. Huh. They all look so different to me. Yeah. That it's really neat. And the aliens, when they did go down to the planet, and they were seeing so many different creatures. Some of them reminded were from previous Star Trek series. Correct. Others were to, new. Which I got to do back then in the ninety twos. In the <laughs> sorry, in the ninety fives. So uh, the uh, Andorian, I did on Deep Space Nine and I got to do the new version with us so it's that's kind of that's kind of awesome to, do, to be able to wrap that career and 
now being in charge now when I was just an assistant for Michael Westmore at the time, which is one of my peers and, and uh, one of the best makeup artists in the world, I get to extend his masterpieces. And That's now make really my cool. own. And, and now, now you make, get to make your yeah. own. Now, do you keep the pieces or are they like pretty much just you can only use them like we two or three times? Once. Nope, only used once. How come? Uh, it's Star Trek. Yeah, but it's the same characters. Don't the... No, no. Um, w w once we put it on and glue it together, it all becomes basically one piece. Uh, mm -hmm. We could... No, no. It would... You would... In that HD camera, you would see that I used the same piece twice. Really? Yeah. So what do you do with the pieces once they're done? You they, recycle them? No. Nope. Uh, they get uh, packed up, shipped back to the shop, and we hold on to them for whatever reason. But um, sometimes, you, basically, they get thrown away, but they're, they're assets. So they get sent back to the shop. So you can't reuse but, the pieces anymore? No. No. Qual for, qual for quality reasons, there's no reason to do this uh, amazing show mm -hmm. and uh, not just use a beautiful, fresh piece every day so you don't go, well, that was weird that one day. Like, but here's the thing, like on, on DS9, DS9 and Voyager, we would use the same prosthetic mm -hmm. over and over and over. As a makeup artist, it sucks, but as a makeup artist, it was great because I learned how to how to fix that edge mm -hmm. which then became a ledge because you know first of all it's super flat and then the next day it's got a tattered edge and then the next day it's got a ledge and the next day it's a, it's a quarter of an inch thick and you got to figure out how to hide that so you don't see it when you're watching my emmy nominated show <laughs> emmy nominated episode how um, do you how do you remove the makeup is it like with um, it's uh, oil it's an oil it's an oil based yeah it's mirror state it's an oil based product which is sensitive or not sensitive to her skin cuz it's a lot of glue there's like two and a half ounces of glue that goes on her face every day and wearing that for 18 hours mm -hmm. that'd be hard yeah i mean i have 105 hour work weeks 105 really yes you get shoot in canada Yes. So you're Canadian. I am not. I'm a Californian. Uh, I get relocated, relocated to Toronto to shoot. Yes. So you're on hiatus right now for Star Trek. Um, we are prepping and creating new characters for the next season, which Already? you're not going to ask me about because I can't tell you anything. Um, but there's a bunch of cool stuff coming up. Um, I leave next week, April 4th, to go up and start prepping for season two. When you guys are doing their makeup, yes. do you have like a sheet sheet so that you know this one goes on the left side, this goes here or whatever? It's or do you test. do it more by like a photo that you work from? Well, uh, When the boys at the shop at Alchemy FX, uh, when they sculpt it, um, they break it down into pieces. So it'll be a cowl, face, lip. So I already know that. I already know where everything is going to go. But sometimes you turn a... a, a no, I'm not going to say that. Um... <laughs> you, uh, I, I've never done it. I, was, I don't know why I was going to say it out loud, but um, uh, we we know where where it is. It's the coloring and and bringing them all all those four pieces together, five pieces together, to make it one solid masterpiece. Well, I will not ask you what's happening for season two. I will cool be stuff. watching it. Cool stuff, yeah. Cool stuff. Will you be working on anything else simultaneously while you're working on Star Trek or anything that we can see I to do. tide us over until the new Star Trek Discovery I do, season I starts? I do the, uh, I help out uh, my friend Aaron Kruger McCash is the department head of uh, the American Horror Story TV shows and uh, 911. So I get to play on those. On my off time between the two shows, I get to go play with Aaron and her team uh, with Ryan Murphy on American Horror Story. Not that I have one three Emmys for American Horror Story. <laughs> I got shit, so I got shit, funny. I got I got throw shit. No. Um, yes, uh, multiple <laughs> Emmy winning makeup artist James McKinnon on hit TV show. I'm pretty funny. You I should have been a, I should have been a comedian. I should have been a comedian. <laughs> See, oh, you get rid you get rid of Glenn and I can just chat away. He's free. Um, no. Free. No. No. Um, She's looking with disapproval. <laughs> no, I'm said I'm my safe word is cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. <laughs> My safe word is cantaloupe. So if, if you hear something I'm not supposed to say, you're supposed to say cantaloupe. cantaloupe. It happens all the time. 
So you work at 911, which I am surprised is really fun. But what prosthetics would they, oh, I guess when there's they, a lot of, there's the he baby got his head the, yes, yeah, with a thing yeah. on, so I guess that would be prosthetics? That's prosthetics, the baby in the, in the tube. In the tube. Yeah. That wasn't a real baby. No, that was a, uh, uh, a toy. No. No, it was a it was a sculpted, beautiful baby from uh, Vincent uh, Van Dyke effects. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But there was a baby when they put it into the ambulance. Cause I heard Correct. Something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the one in the tube was a, a prosthetic. I hope it wouldn't be a baby. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> That'd be and then child the snake, services. The, the snake that they made, beautiful snake. Yes. Yeah. That's all fake. You know, if a snake is around your throat, you're supposed to spray it with Windex. Stick your fingers in the eye. I don't know. I had, no, a sna- I had a snake. I had a snake. I had Sammy. I had a snake named Sammy for 13 years. Was the size of that snake. Boas usually don't attack people. No, only if you smell like the rat that you're going to throw in. Mm-hmm. Never touch the rat and then try to touch them after because you smell like rat. Yeah, but they know or it's you. baby rabbit or whatever you have to feed a feeder rabbits, feeder chickens. With no, that, you're supposed to feed them whatever their girth is. So okay. when you got a snake that you got to feed him something that thick that's dead some will eat dead meat but usually they like that challenge of of the thing <laughs> Sammy I still have Sammy in a box I I I actually cremated my snake I still have him College friends had a snake. He recognized us, and he'd always like oh, yeah. drape himself around her neck, oh, yeah. but never tighten no, 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 to be no. uncomfortable. Yeah. No, it was really very. He was like very hand raised. Was no, very no, they're, they're, no. They're they're very friendly. Yeah, it was, very, it was an albino one. Oh, Thank cool. you so much for talking with me. Pleasure I hope I will talk to you again.